Gen Pop fam was popping. It's Throwback Thursdays. You already know I'm playing the classics. Every Thursday, I'm uploading the classics. This is the whole Comstock, first time in Comstock saga, all four parts together. You heard? So y'all sit back, enjoy the ride, pause. Z-Man, Suicide Polo, Ski Man, you already know what it is. Brooklyn, Brownsville, Dykeman, 200 block. We in the building. Let's get it. Boom, so we on our way to Comstock, know what I mean? I'm on the bus, on our way to Comstock from Oneida, know what I mean? At the time, I didn't know that I was just going to Comstock to be reclassified and sent to another medium. At the time, I didn't know nothing about that, so I just was like, damn, they're sending me to the Maxi Max. You heard? So we was on the bus going to Comstock. Everybody was quiet and stressed out. Like, ain't nobody happy on the bus going to Comstock. Like, everybody was quiet and stressed out. Right? So... We make a stop to pick up some other, other dudes. I mean, I don't know. I forgot what jail it was or whatever. But we make a stop to pick up some other dudes. So one of the dudes who come on the bus is a gay dude, right? So this nigga comes on the bus. This nigga mad funny. You heard? He start cracking mad jokes like, I mean, nigga named Dawn. I mean. Nigga mad funny. So he got everybody in the bus laughing and shit. Like he fucking with the police, saying shit to the police. Know what I mean? Saying all type of funny shit. He a dude that probably been up north a couple of times himself. You feel what I'm saying? So he done changed the whole spirit of the bus now. Know what I mean? Now dudes is not so stressed out. We still going to Comstock. We know it's real. But know what I mean? This dude had us laughing and joking and shit. So we was kind of, we was kind of in a different spirit. You feel what I'm saying? So then we pull up to the stop. Shit looking crazy. When you come in, they take you to the receiving room. That's like in the basement of the jail. Like, know what I mean? It's like a few little cells in the basement of the jail. Shit looking crazy down there. It's looking like the type of place a couple of niggas done got killed on the low. You feel me? And, 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 and beat into comas on several occasions. That's just how it's looking in there. It's not a place you want to be. Just coming into a max prison like niggas got you in some little small basement with some cells. That shit's scary. So we was in there. It was probably like 10 of us. So the police start calling niggas names and shit, right? They be doing some real greaseball foul shit in, in that basement in Comstock. They start calling niggas names, you feel me? To come into the, to, to get searched and... Know what I mean, give your name and your information, your, your your DIN number and all of that good shit. They start calling niggas names one at a time. They going down the line and they get to the gay dude dorm. You feel what I'm saying? So this was some foul shit. So the police was like, now this police nigga, he's a real devil. Like this dude is a real, like he got a reputation I didn't know at the time. But dudes put me on like, yo, he got a, he fucked with this other police nigga named German. And German got a reputation for killing motherfuckers. You understand what I'm saying? Like this, you see this nigga, he look like a giant Chucky doll. Real talk, he look like a big giant Chucky doll. He's a scary motherfucker. You don't want to see that nigga pop up at your cell. You understand what I'm saying? On the late night, shit just crack, your cell crack, and that big motherfucker come in. So this police nigga that was in the receiving room with us, I heard he was German like right hand man. You feel me? So this nigga evil like he comes up to the gay nigga. He like, what's your name? So son was like Dawn such and such or whatever. So he looking at the dude card. He like Dawn. He said, you know what? He calls his other man. His other man is over there searching inmates. And he like, hey Tom. He like, you know what? I think Dawn's a fucking fag. What do you think, Tom? This nigga is in the gay nigga face like this, close up in his face, while the gay nigga is standing to the side. The police is like on his face like this, and he trying to look straight and, you know, not get beat up. So now the police man come over there. 
He said, what do you think, Tom? What do you think? So now they both standing here with him in the middle, and they on each side of him staring in his face, the side of his face. The, the, the dude doing is looking straight. He like, what do you think, Tom? He like, yeah, I think you're right. I think he is a fucking fag. Niggas wasn't feeling that. Like, everybody else that was there, like I said, son had us laughing on the bus. You feel what I'm saying? Like, niggas was looking at each other like, yo, these niggas is fucked up. So then the nigga, the police nigga, he was like this. He kept saying his name fucked up. He said, so are we right, Dawn? He said, are you a fucking fag? Dawn ain't say shit. Dawn started crying. Like, tears started coming down his face. And niggas was going in on that. They like, oh, look, Dawn's fucking crying. Dawn's fucking crying. Look, look at this shit. He's like, listen, motherfucker, you come in this fucking jail with that faggot shit, and you're gonna have fucking problems. So both these police is just pressing this nigga like, listen, motherfucker, you come in my jail, you come in here with that faggot shit, you're gonna have fucking problems. Know what I mean? This nigga just crying. Everybody, nobody was feeling that shit. We was all looking at each other like, these fucking niggas is foul, my nigga. We all felt fucked up about that shit, like, shit was unnecessary shit, you feel what I'm saying? And now that I'm a grown ass man, I look back at that shit, I'm like, you know what I mean? Just cause a motherfucker gay, that don't mean he wanna go into jail and fuck everybody in the jail. Imagine being a gay nigga in a, in a men's jail where niggas are sexual predators, and you a gay nigga. That's a nightmare, you feel what I'm saying? Niggas be in the yard stabbing each other and cutting each other over you, you don't even know about it. You and your cell minding your business, niggas in the yard going to war over you. You feel me? Shit ain't no joke. But anyway, that shit was real fucked up. So these dudes be doing foul shit in that basement in Comstock. So they trying to break you into the jail. So they trying to scare you up. So that you come into jail, like in your place. You feel what I'm saying? So these niggas do some real foul sucker shit. They do some shit where they be like, all right, there's some feet marks on the floor and some hand marks on the wall. They tell you to put your feet in the feet marks in your hand and your hands in the hand marks and don't come up off the wall, right? They say that. But then they say some little slick shit under their breath to make you take your hands off the walls just so that they could pound you out. So they did that shit to me. They put me up on the wall. Put your hands up on the wall, your feet on the floor. Don't come off the fucking wall. I'm like, all right. They're like, you hear me, motherfucker? Don't come off the motherfucking wall. I'm like, all right. So boom, the nigga's like, yo, when I tell you, you gonna slowly take your hands off the wall. And, he, and they say some slick shit like, all right, take your hands off the wall, move your feet up. And you listen to that shit, you take your hands off, both of them niggas rush you. Boom, boom, hit you in your ribs. Hit you in your ribs a few times. Boom, bong, bing, bong. Get the fuck back up. And they throw you back on the wall. So this is what they doing to a, a little nigga like me, 17 years old. <laughs> Now, hold on, let me see. Let me see. Now, nah, yeah, I was still 17. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, folks. I'll be 18 in the next jail. Matter of fact, some of them Franklin jails, some of them stories in Franklin, like I said, I was in Franklin twice. So some of them I was 17, and some of them I was like 19. You feel me? Because I was in that hub for like three years. But anyway, you know what I mean? Niggas pound me out for taking my hands off the wall. Bing, bong, bong, bing, bing. My shit like this. They snatched me, throw me back up on the wall. This time, I, 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 I guess I got this shit right, but they doing that shit on purpose, nigga. They pounding out everybody. We go to the mess hall to go eat, you know what I mean? We go to the mess hall to go eat, right? So, I'm in the mess hall and shit. I'm sitting there. It's my first day in there. <laughs> like I said, I'm young as a motherfucker. You feel me? I just hear somebody calling me. Hey, yo, Brian. Hey, yo, Brian. So I turn around. It's this nigga from my projects. My man from my projects, this nigga Reese. Some niggas know him as Bugs. Some niggas know him as Mo. You feel what I'm saying? My son from my peas. I mean, I see this nigga in the mess hall. He like this. Hey, yo, what up, nigga? Hey, yo, where you at? What block you on? You feel what I'm saying? So I'm like, you know, I'm happy to see a nigga face from my hood. And I could tell by Sun Ho's swag and the way he moving, Sun was doing what he want to do in the jail. You feel what I'm saying? So he like, yo, where you at, nigga? He like, yo, where the mother come to the yard? I'm like, yo, I can't even come to the yard yet. 
Because I just got to the jail and they make you stay like locked down for like three days or something before they even start letting you out. You feel what I'm saying? So he like, yo, what house? Where you at? So I tell the nigga like, yo, I'm on B7. He like, all right, I'm going to try. He like, damn, I'm going to try to get at you. I'm going to try to get at you. Nigga Bugs was the type of nigga. He was from my projects from Howard. And he was a straight product of the crack game. You feel what I'm saying? Like this nigga was like 16 years old. Know what I mean? Riding around on mopeds and motorcycles with big stupid hercs on, clapping niggas, selling crack. You feel what I'm saying? Like he was an advanced nigga for his age. Son was older than me, but growing up, I saw son doing shit grown niggas do at 16 years old. You feel what I'm saying? Him and his brother is both Brownsville legends. He got an older brother that's older than him. The nigga get, that's my Gemini OG, you heard? But like, yeah, both of them niggas is legends. Nigga Mo, the nigga Reese. Son always was a wild ass nigga, you feel what I'm saying? Always, and he always was a nigga getting money and busting his gun and all of that good shit. And he never was a crab nigga to me, like growing up in the projects and all of that. Like I used to come to Sun Crib and shit like that. He never was a crab nigga, like you feel me? He always was a good nigga to me. So when I saw that nigga, I was dumb happy. Like that's my bro, we in here. You feel what I'm saying? So boom, I forgot to mention. When we was going to the mess hall, right? It was this kid. This kid, this nigga was like a hood nigga. But, but he was mad loud and wild and talkative and talking to everybody and shit. Word to my mother. And I heard a, 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 a life of nigga that was in there. He was like, yo, that nigga right there, he gonna be a bitch. So I was like, nah, I mean, this ain't TV and shit like that. Like, niggas ain't turning hood niggas into bitches. Like, that's in rap videos and shit like that. He like, watch, that nigga right there, he like, I'm telling you, nigga, I've been here for a long time. He like, that nigga gonna be a bitch. And I'm gonna tell you what happens the next time I saw this dude. But anyway, like I said, so I see my man from my projects. I'm mad happy that somebody in my pro somebody here from my projects that I know, you feel what I'm saying? So I go back in my I go back to my block for a couple of days. We couldn't lock out. You feel what I'm saying? I'm small talking with niggas on the tear. Mistake, mistake one. Small talking with too many niggas on the tier. Like, you feel what I'm saying? I just came in. I don't even know niggas. I'm talking to niggas in my cell and shit like that. So, boom. On the first day, they locked out the reception niggas. That was us. There was other niggas that came there, too, that didn't come with us. But they was reception niggas. So, boom. The first day they locked niggas out. Like I said, I was running my mouth on the cell. So, niggas already know. Like, I mean, I'm a, I ain't no life ass nigga. I ain't no nigga with no major time. I'm a nigga with a little bit of time. You feel what I'm saying? You can't be letting niggas know shit like that when you in the, when you behind the wall. Niggas locked out. So I see these two niggas coming down the tier. Now I noticed these niggas. Both of them was in C74. You feel what I'm saying? I ain't gonna mention niggas name. One of them niggas, he was a nigga that he was in a certain house in C74. He never left that house. Anytime a nigga tried to come in that house, he would get niggas ran out. He had mad doges and he would get niggas ran out and niggas hated the nigga. And niggas always was like, yo, if we could ever catch this nigga, he gonna die. Like, you feel what I'm saying? But he basically ran that house in, in, the, in the four building. All the police that was in that house, they held that nigga down. So basically, son... He was a nigga from the Bronx. Basically, son was a notorious nigga in the four building, but he never left that crib and he knew better because the whole four building wanted to kill a nigga. You feel what I'm saying? But he had a body or two. So I see this nigga coming down a tear. He with this other nigga that was in the four building. You feel what I'm saying? I noticed this nigga too, right? These niggas both got rug cutters in their hand. He like, yo, I don't, so the nigga that's from the Bronx, like I said, that I, that I recognize from the four building, he like this, yo, I don't give a fuck, my nigga, I don't give a fuck, I'm ready to die, I don't give a fuck. So he literally running down on niggas, yo, what you got, what you got in your cell? Like, trying to rob niggas and shit because the nigga just blew trial to mad time. So he on some suicidal shit, like, I don't give a fuck, I don't care, you feel me? So he like, yo, fuck that, he just coming up north. So he trying to run down on niggas like this Rikers Island, you feel what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm all the way in the back of the tier, the police and all of that shit where you go out, that's all the way in the front of the tier, you feel what I'm saying? I'm all the way in the back of the tier where a nigga can't hear you if you screaming, nigga. So these niggas is running up in niggas' cells. Basically, when niggas lock out, him and his man is running down on niggas with two rugs and going up in niggas' cells seeing what niggas got. So they get to my cell, both of these niggas back out the rugs. They like, yo, what you got in your cell? What you got in your cell? Nigga run, his man runs up in my cell, comes out with something like a can of tuna fish or something.
Now I could look at his man. I look at the his expression on his man face. He ain't want to do none of this because real talk. This nigga was going home in a couple of weeks or months. Like he he son was on the island for so long that nigga had like time served. You feel what I'm saying? So he only had to come up north for a couple of months and he was going home. But this was his man from the four building and his man got like 40, 50 years. He blew travel like 40, 50 years. And this nigga like 19, 20 years old. The nigga who blew travel. Like, I mean, he just holding his man down because that's his man. But he don't really want to do none of this shit because this nigga going home. But he don't want to, he want to show loyalty to his man because his man blew travel all that time. And he about to go home on it. So niggas running my cell. Both of these niggas got rug cutters. Like I said, it's my first, second locking out at the jail. You feel what I'm saying? Nigga come out my shit with like a, a can of tuna fish and, 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 and keeps it moving. He like, fuck that, I don't give a fuck. So the nigga from the, from the Bronx, from the four building, he like, fuck that, I don't give a fuck. He like, I don't give a fuck, nigga, I'm robbing shit. I'm wilding out, nigga, I'm ready to die. I don't give a fuck, right? So I'm tight. I'm like, niggas running down on me. Like I said, I ain't no killer, nigga. I ain't no sucker, but I ain't motherfucking Spider-Man or Captain America either. You feel me? I ain't got no adamantium shield or none of that shit. I wasn't on them type of vibes where I'm going to get stabbed up or cut up over a can of tuna fish. You feel what I'm saying? But trust me, I was tight and I was already in my mind like, all right, my nigga, small world. You reap what you sow, nigga. What goes around comes around. When you sleep, you don't know. You feel what I'm saying? He don't know. I know niggas in the jail. But like I said, I'm not the type of nigga to run the niggas for my beef. Even if niggas is for my projects, I'm not going to, yo, son, niggas, did. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to find a way to handle that shit. I don't handle it now. My sneaky ass will find a way to get something done to that motherfucker. You feel what I'm saying? So I'm like, all right. But like I said, it's my first time in a motherfucking max jail. You feel me? I got three to nine years. These niggas got 40, 50 years type vibes. And like I said, now check it though. This nigga who did this shit from the Bronx, I would run into him again. And when I run into him again, it's some real deep shit that, that I'm gonna tell you. But we'll get to that. So now I'm, I'm, I'm locking out in the jail, but I ain't going to the yard yet. You feel what I'm saying? I only could go like to programs and, and I mean medical and shit like that. And I'm going back to my cell. So now I'm getting a little bit comfortable and used to being there. I don't know what happened to the nigga from the Bronx. The other nigga, like I said, he went home. Now I mean, he, that nigga went to another jail and went home. You feel me? Because I heard, I overheard them. The nigga from the Bronx, I don't know what happened to the nigga. I think they moved him to another tier because he was there to stay. You understand? See, matter of fact, we was in reception one day. We went to reception. The nigga was in reception. Yo, this nigga was hurting. This nigga was in reception. So they was telling niggas, yo, the, the, old, the old timers from the jail be doing reception. They telling niggas, yo, a lot of y'all niggas gonna go home. And when you go home, you gonna do this, you gonna do that. So the nigga was like, nigga, I ain't going home. He was like, how, how much time you got, young blood? And nigga was like, some shit like, yo, I got 40 years. And everybody was like, damn, you feel me? Nigga was dumb young, like 19 years old. Nigga had like 40 joints, you feel me? So even my felt sorry for the nigga, even though him and his man ran down on me for that can of tuna fish, you feel what I'm saying? I felt sorry for the nigga, like, damn, I ain't no son had time like that. So that's when I found out why the nigga was acting crazy and doing crazy shit because that time, my nigga, that's, that time is different, you feel me? Nigga be feeling suicidal. I still don't like the nigga, and I still got that shit in my mind that that nigga gonna pay for that can of tuna fish, and it won't be 69 cents. So I get cool with a couple of niggas. My nigga G, he from up the hill in the field. He had 25 to life. That was my motherfucking nigga. This other Latin King kid, I can't remember son's name right now. Not me, but that was my nigga. Like we was, it was me, G, him, and yeah, this nigga Trigger from the Bronx. Son had 47 joints. He was an ill nigga and a real nigga. You feel what I'm saying? And I heard he gave back that time. I really hope that's true. Like I said, I was new on the tier. I'm a young buck ass nigga who don't got no motherfucking real time. Niggas ain't trying to fuck with me. These niggas is lifers. But I'm an irresistible type of nigga, so niggas started taking a liking to me. You feel me? So, one day, this nigga comes on the tear. He a porter. He sweep up and mop up the tear. The nigga start, he walking up to, to new niggas who just came in and starting conversations that they sell. I'm a, I, like I said, I'm a young stupid nigga, fresh up north. I don't know shit. This nigga starts coming to my cell, pollying with me. Come to find out. He was from Brownsville, and his family was from Brownsville, and I knew all his family, and some of his family was my people. But, like I said, I was young and stupid, and little did I know, all of this shit was an act and a scam. Know what I mean? The nigga was scheming, and I'ma tell you why. So, boom, you heard? So, like I said, 
this porter ass nigga, he starts coming up on the block. Now I mean, small talking with niggas. He, like a naive young motherfucker, he starts hollering at me like, yo, yo, so you know what I mean? Where you from? Are you from the Ville? Oh word, where you at? Tilden? Van Dyke? I'm like, nah, I'm from Howard. He like, oh word, Howard? He like, yo, my peoples, my family, they live right in 300. Know what I mean? You probably know my nephew and all of that. So I did know his nephew and his nephew was my mans like that. You feel what I'm saying? So I'm like, yeah, that's my mans. You feel me? So he like, yeah, man, that's my mom's such and such and such. So you feel me? All of this shit was game. So like I said, I can't lock out at this time. Like I might be able to go like to a medical or some shit like that. But I can't lock out because you, when you come into jail, yeah, I said three days before, but I think it's 10 days you got to stay locked in for before they start letting you go to the yard and shit like that, if I can remember correctly. So the dude, right, he comes and sweeps up the tear. So every day he come up there making small conversation with me. You feel what I'm saying? And now, and now the nigga got my guard down because he done named a few motherfuckers that I know and personally, you feel me, from my hood. Nigga always just want to talk about Brownsville and name names and niggas that he know from Brownsville to keep me, not me, interested in conversation, you feel me? Nigga coming through passing cigarettes, coming through passing motherfucking snacks and things like that. Stupid shit like that, that you don't supposed to be taking from nobody in fucking jail, especially when you just got there, right? So, like I said, I can't lock out yet. So like I said, I can't lock out yet. So this nigga is just giving me all type of shit, talking to me and shit like that. So boom, like I said, I was getting cool with niggas on my block, especially my nigga G from up the hill that had 25 to life. You feel what I'm saying? Me and son used to be vibing at night. One day after that nigga left, he was like, yo, son, real talk, son. This jail, so I'm supposed to mind my business and shit. He said, but I'm going to tell you some shit, my nigga, because you my little man. He said, son, that nigga that keep coming and talking to you, son. He said, son, that nigga ain't your man, son. He said, that nigga's a fucking booty bandit, my nigga. He said, all of that shit about Brownsville and niggas he know and his family. He said, all of that shit might be true, my nigga. He said, he said that might be his family. That might be his nephew. He said, but my nigga, that nigga got 25 years in. That nigga family don't give a fuck about him, and he don't give a fuck about his family. You understand what I'm saying? He said, all of that shit is game for you to feel comfortable, for you to let your guard down and, and feel like he peoples. He naming a bunch of niggas from your hood, shit like that. He was like, them niggas don't know that nigga. He said, that nigga been ear hustling on the gate for the last 25 years, listening to other niggas' conversations, absorbing that shit, so that when young niggas like you come through, he could throw a bunch of names and hoods around and you start feeling like he a real nigga and a nigga from your hood. He said, nigga, that nigga's a booty bandit. So I was like, what? So he was like, yeah, man. He said, yo, I supposed to mind my business, nigga, but fuck that nigga. Like, you feel what I'm saying? He like, that nigga, he said, so stop talking to that nigga. Stop letting that nigga come up on your gate and lean up on your gate like that. That's disrespectful, my nigga. He said, that nigga leaning on your gate to, to send a message out like he trying to motherfucking get you. So I was like, what? That nigga told me that nigga. Steam was coming out my ears. I was like, oh, man, it's a wrap. Once again. The bubble razor, nigga, that you don't supposed to break. Like I say, listen, a bubble razor is just a shaving razor. They call it the bubble razor because you get it from the police command, little shit, the bubble, where the police be at. So they call them bubble razors, but it's a shaving razor. You feel what I'm saying? So once again, nigga, that nigga told me that I was tight. I, at this time, I know you don't supposed to break the bubble razor. I don't give a fuck. I break that shit up and melt that shit into the toothbrush, double-edged sword. You feel what I'm saying? I'm, I'm nasty with this. I'm nasty making prison weapons, my nigga. I'm gonna show you some shit. Now, I ain't mad nasty with the bangers. I mean, I know niggas that, I know niggas that they're talented. That in another life, centuries ago, they were weapon makers and sword makers because in the penitentiary, the type of shit they made weapons out of was unfucking believable on Rikers Island, the type of shit niggas was making weapons out of was unbelievable. Spanish niggas, I'ma keep it a buck with you, my nigga. I know one of my mans, this Dominican nigga I know, that I was up north with, son, this nigga is the ultimate weapon stasher on the planet Earth, nigga. When he stashes a weapon, I done seen police searching right where the weapon is at. Son, this nigga is next level. I can't give up the tactics to this day because it could get back in there. So, but like I said, this nigga was next level. But back to the story. 
I'll talk about him when I get to Happy Hudson. You heard? Because it's bangers in Happy Hudson that still stash from when we was there that they'll never find. You heard? But anyway, listen, check it. So boom, once again, I bust the fucking bubble razor open. I'm like, this nigga trying to play me? Like, you trying to play me for my ass? Nigga was mentioning this nigga. He mentioned this, yo, I, yeah, I heard this nigga just got killed in front of 300. Yeah, I knew he was my nephew's man and shit like that. He was talking about my son Head, my son Will from Harlem. That son used to have family in, in my projects. Long story, son got murdered in front of 300 in my projects and he was mentioning him like yeah i heard the kid who just got murdered in front of 300 so the nigga game was sharp you feel me his ear hustling game was sharp and he mentioned my man who had just got killed the last memory that i have of son that got killed the nigga son was from harlem he used to just come to the ville to visit his family the last memory i had of son was one day we was going to the store late night in the ville like two in the morning we was going to that store it might have been like one in the morning yeah it was like two in the morning we was going to that yellow store that's on Rockaway and East New York Avenue that made the heroes because them niggas heroes used to be right. I don't know if they still write right like that to this day, but back in the days, it was just right. You feel me? So we going all the way over there to get a hero. It's like two in the morning, late night. So we walking past the rent office building where the phone used to be at, where the pay phone used to be at that work. Shit was crazy over there, you feel me? Me, the nigga Will that got killed, you feel what I'm saying? And, and, and this girl named Keisha, that my son Tracy used to mess with. You feel what I'm saying? We walk in late. And I don't know if Tracy was there too. Tracy might have been there too. I can't remember. But we was going to that store and there's mad niggas out there. You know what I mean? We going to that store and the nigga sitting in the car. He just, he beefing with a nigga that's standing on the block. Yo, whatever nigga, fuck you. Suck my dick, whatever. He beefing. You know what I mean? We walking like we trying to get past the commotion. Nigga just pull out the ratchet. Yo, what the fuck you said? Yo, word the mother nigga ran up on ran up on the car and just start hitting. Blah 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 blah. Nigga, other niggas start hitting. Blah 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 blah. We running like this. Bullets whizzing past our ears. We running. Now I mean in the direction of the store. We laughing and giggling like this shit is a game. You feel what I'm saying? Like real talk. Like it was fun. Like we was teenagers. You understand what I'm saying? Niggas shooting behind us, all crazy. We running like the shit was a joke and the shit was fun. So when I found out son got killed a year later while I was locked up, that shit was the first thing I thought about. Like, damn, we was running in the middle of gunfire. Like that shit was fun and games. And now look, gunfire took this nigga life. Like shit was wild so i was fucked up over that so booty banded ass nigga was mentioning niggas like him he definitely had my guard down you feel what i'm saying so boom so yeah like i said double barrel bubble razor and a toothbrush you feel me i waited for this nigga to come through so the nigga took mad long all day to come through he finally came through by the time he came through my steamboat my steamboat was a little bit down come on you a traffic cop you about to run me the fuck over nigga you feel what i'm saying but like yeah the steam, the steamboat was a little bit low by the time some came down, but I was still tight. So I'm laying on my motherfucking bed and I'm reading a book and shit, right? So the nigga comes up to my cell. He like, he leans on my cell. So he like, like niggas told me that's disrespectful. Don't let a nigga touch your gate or lean on your gate. So I, I mean, I didn't know none of that. So now the nigga's leaning on my gate. I'm tight. So I was like, yo, he like, yo, he like, yo, Brownsville, what up, man? So I'm like, ain't shit, nigga. I'm good. I'm reading. He like, yo, what up, man? I mean, I want to holler at you. So I'm like, yo, my nigga. I said, I'm reading. I'm on my bunk. I'm reading. I'm chilling. Now I mean, get off my gate. So he was like, what? Get off your gate? He like, oh, why you talking greasy to me like that now? What's that about now? I said, my nigga, get off of my fucking gate. You feel me? I'm laying down on my bed. I got the book. I lift up, though. I'm like, yo, my nigga, get off of my fucking, get off of my fucking gate. So everybody that's around um, in the cells next to me, everybody quiet to see what's going to happen. You feel me? So the nigga like, man, go ahead, man, go ahead. And he's still leaning off my gate. Yo, my motherfucking, you know how on the cartoon, the motherfucking, um, the temperature shit go up and it bust, pow. Now I mean, the little bulb bust at the top. That's how my motherfucking temper went. When he wouldn't get off the gate, I just jumped up and had the, I had the double barrel in my hand. I jumped up and ran and tried to cut the nigga through the gate. Young! Just like the nigga in downstate, but these shits, I could get my arm all the way through. Now I mean, I ran up to the gate and just dived and tried to cut the nigga through the gate. Yang! That nigga jumped back and it missed the nigga. He like, oh, alright. He like, alright, alright. He said, I'm gonna see you in the yard. 
right? He was like, I'm gonna see you when you finally lock out and come to the yard. So I was like, yeah, nigga, see me. Fuck you talking about, nigga. Get the fuck, I told you, get the fuck off my gate, nigga. You booty banded ass nigga, get the fuck away from me, nigga. Word to my mother and I'm gonna see you in the yard. I'll be in the fucking yard. Real talk, nigga was like, all right, all right, and he walked away. My OG niggas was like, yeah, son, yeah, son. That's how you do it, son. Fuck that nigga, son. Let him come to the yard, son. And niggas was like, he pussy. He ain't gonna come. He ain't gonna want that smoke when you go to the yard, son. Real talk. Watch. He like now that now that he know you ain't the one nigga, he gonna fall way the fuck back. Watch. So you know I don't trust that shit. So now it's a couple of days until I finally get to go to the yard. You feel what I'm saying? Now I'm seeing niggas like the nigga Reese. He like yo, make sure you come to the yard when you lock out, nigga. We gonna be in the yard. You feel me? He t I ain't telling niggas nothing about nothing. So niggas put me on. Niggas was like, listen. When you want to get it on with niggas, when it's time to get it on, you come into the yard and you stand in the basketball court. You feel what I'm saying? The basketball court is right. Niggas be taking showers in the yard. It's like a back section where niggas take showers in the yard. Should be freezing fucking cold. Niggas out there butt naked taking showers in the yard. That's the life of niggas for real, for real. I wasn't on that level. But anyway, so boom. The nigga motherfucking um, niggas told me like go on that basketball court and stay in the basketball court until you see him. And if he want to get it on, he going to come in the basketball court and y'all get it popping right then and there. So I wasn't trying to bring no razor to the yard. You feel what I'm saying? I'm like, fuck it. This nigga come. I'm just going to punch this nigga in his face. And I was like, yo, if, if I could throw the basketball, I was thinking like, yo, I, if I just throw the basketball in his face, like, boom, and then steal off on the nigga, I'm going to try to do that. I can't remember if I was able to get a basketball or not. But because it's right soon as Rhett come in. So I don't know what, I don't know how the shit going to be. But I know niggas told me stand in the basketball court, and if you see that nigga and he come towards you, just pop. You feel me? I ain't know if the nigga was gonna have a banger or what. I didn't give a fuck at the moment, my nigga. So boom, they call wreck. I finally go to wreck for the first time. I go to the basketball court and I stand in the basketball court, and the whole yard is coming out. You feel what I'm saying? So I'm waiting for this nigga. You know the heart. You know the heart was on Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, coming out my chest type status. So I'm like this. So I'm seeing Reese, Sean Lee, brother Leron, and Pop from, from Brownsville houses. All of them niggas was in the yard waiting to see me for the first time. You feel what I'm saying? But I was standing on the basketball court. I could see them niggas where the Brooklyn niggas be at. Niggas like Reese, like, yo. And I'm like, he, he didn't even know what was popping. You feel what I'm saying? I was just standing over there. He didn't even know what was taking me so long to get over there. You feel me? So finally, this booty bandit nigga, the nigga named Sincere, they call him Doc. I end up running into this nigga later on in my bid again, and it's the funniest shit in the world. You just gotta stay tuned. But, so the nigga comes into the yard, so now I see the nigga, I'm like this. It's about to go down. He comes into the yard with another little young nigga with the nigga holding on. Up north, niggas be having the young nigga hold on to a nigga's side or walk with the nigga on the side. It's like saying like, yo, this is my new little bitch. You feel me? So the nigga comes in the yard with another little nigga on some this my bitch shit. And he sees me standing in the basketball court. And he looks at me and he starts smiling. And I'm like this. Young as a motherfucker looking like I was two years old. Now I mean, in a fucking maximum security murder house. You feel me? So the nigga looks at me, he keeps spinning the yard with the little nigga. He doesn't come on the basketball court. So now Reese and them niggas, it's like, yo, son, come here, nigga. So I go over there. I see, I see all these niggas for the first time. Pop, Leron. I don't mean to be putting niggas' govs out, but I was a young nigga. I knew some of these niggas by their govs and shit. You feel what I'm saying? So niggas see me, yo, son, how the fuck you get so tall, son? I remember when you was a little fat nigga. You feel what I'm saying? But it was nothing but love, my nigga. Nothing but love. That's one thing I say about Brownsville. We may fight and kill each other in them streets, nigga, but in that pen, the unity game is unmatched from any borough, any section of New York City. You will never find a section of New York City in the penitentiary that stick together more than Brownsville niggas. You know why? We grow up different. The, the way we grow up, nigga, we taught from this. We taught from knee high. That's your man, that's your fucking brother. You understand what I'm saying? If you got a dollar slice, you cut that shit in half. If you got a 50 cent rice off of Pickin' Avenue, you pour some of that shit into your man's hands with that dollar fries. We used to mix the rice with the dollar fries. I used to do sick shit like that. Dollar 50, get my dollar rice, fried rice with the, with the 50 cent. 
I used to get the 50 cent rice with my dollar fries, mix that shit, pour the rice into the french fries and mix that shit and that was dinner, nigga. Pickin' Avenue, if you never ate that 50 cent rice from Pickin' Avenue, and you from my era, I don't know what you was doing. But anyway, like I said, niggas show me mad love. I chill with niggas in the yard. Reese let it be known that I was in the spot and every nigga that was team from BK or from the Ville, niggas ain't do nothing but embrace me and show me love. But like, so boom, after that day in the yard, I go back to my cell, right? This booty bandit nigga, he got the nerve to come to my cell again and say, yo, why you ain't tell me you knew Mo and Pop and them niggas, I said, nigga, I ain't got to tell you nothing. You can learn the hard fucking way. He like, yo, I hope you ain't tell them niggas. I said, nigga, I ain't tell niggas nothing because it's nothing to tell. I was on that basketball court. You wasn't there. You feel what I'm saying? He like, Psh. this nigga like, fucking Brownsville, man. Fucking Brownsville, man. Y'all niggas is crazy. I'm like this. Nigga, go get me some cigarettes and some snacks. Real talk and son was giving me them cigarettes and snacks and I dare him try to make mention of some type of butt games or something like that. I'll blow your fucking head off in here, nigga. Don't play with me. You understand what I'm saying? Like I said, I'm not a killer, but don't push me. You feel me? I'm not a killer, but guess what? When my back is against the wall, I know how to push the retarded button, nigga. I'm a lover, not a fighter, nigga, but if I start feeling like my back is against the motherfucking wall and I ain't got no choice, nigga, the retarded button is in action. And so like I said, after that it was cigarettes and snacks on the house, my nigga. And I dare you ever say something crazy, the Browns villains will be notified and you will be destroyed. You heard? So on that next episode, I'm going to tell you about my first encounter with that psychopath giant Chucky doll German that was the most feared police in Comstock. I mean, I'm going to tell you about the first time I saw that nigga. You heard it was ugly. So like I said, I was only in Comstock to get reclassified and sent to a medium. So I, I wasn't going to be there for that long. But you don't know when they're going to ship you to a medium. You might be there for two months, three months. You just don't know. You feel what I'm saying? At this time now, I could come to the yard every day. I could do all of that. You feel me? I used to always hear stories about this nigga German. He's like, yo, there's a police nigga in here named German. This nigga's a murderer. You heard? <laughs> nah, that shit ain't even funny, though. Niggas was like, yo, that nigga's a fucking maniac, son. Stay out that nigga way. Don't say nothing disrespectful to that nigga. Don't look, don't ice grill that nigga, nothing. So niggas used to have me shook. Like, when am I going to see this nigga? One day that nigga just popped up at my cell. I heard niggas was like, yo, that nigga German coming down the tier. I'm like this. Ah, oh, man. I hope he don't stop in my cell. Sure enough, that nigga stopped in my cell. Yo, crack 37 cell. Like, know what I mean? Niggas crack my shit. This big giant professional wrestling looking Chucky doll comes in like this step out the cell I step out the cell this nigga got the crazy look in his face like I'm telling you nigga a serial killer looking ass nigga this nigga searching my motherfucking property mad disrespectful in the back of my head I'm like he probably know who I'm associating with, with in the jail and trying to send me a message. And I done heard, I heard the nigga Bugs, the nigga Reese, say some crazy shit one time because I heard that nigga be extorting niggas in the jail. Like, I heard he the type of nigga, if, like, let's say you, you bust your gun in the jail or you do something crazy in the jail and you get away with it, and he find out, he the type of nigga, he'll extort you like, yo, I know you did that shit, you know what I mean? Pay me this or... They gonna find a banger in your cell. You going to the box. You feel what I'm saying? So I heard the nigga Bugs or Reese say some slick shit like, y'all gotta get this nigga some bread. You feel me? I'm like, damn. This nigga really running around the jail extorting niggas and shit like that? Nigga pops up at my cell. Nigga searching my cell. Nigga searching my property mad disrespectfully. Like I told you, I had just came from commissary at the last jail. So that nigga that ran up in my cell and all that shit with his mans and all that, the nigga, the nigga who backed out them, them rugs, all my shit, my whole commissary bag was under the bed. That nigga seen a can of beans that was on the bed or something and just took one can of beans. I had like $50 in commissary or some crazy shit under the bed. You feel what I'm saying? But um, this nigga violating my property, dumping my shit all over the place, got my shit looking crazy. Like he just violating, like he not even searching. He just disrespecting my shit, like to teach me a lesson. Like you a new young nigga coming through Coming through a max jail, nigga. I don't respect you. Nigga tossing my shit. So I had a can of fucking bugler. You feel me? I had a can of bugler for when times got rough, my nigga. For when times got rough 
and I was listening to that little hose, like a little hole in the wall that you could plug a pair of headphones in, and you could hear like TV stations and shit, like the odd couple. Nigga was happy as a motherfucker to hear them TV stations, nigga. You feel me? If I ended up in a cell that the, the shit ain't work, the little hole in the wall, that shit have a nigga tight. Like, you feel what I'm saying? Nigga go in a cell, you be praying you got one of them shits that work. So my shit had one. Nigga, I used to be listening to TV shows at night. I was Gucci. Motherfucking. This nigga, I had a big ass can of bugler uh, um, tobacco. Nigga looked at me. Nigga looked at the bugler. Nigga was like, you too young to smoke. Nigga just dumped that shit over my entire cell. Nigga poured that shit on my bed, in the toilet, on the floor. Nigga was like, clean that shit up. And nigga walked out my cell. I was happy that's all the nigga did. You feel what I'm saying? But I was tight about that bugler. You feel me? But that was the only real running I had with that nigga. Legend had it that niggas talking about they found that nigga watching a nigga's stomach on an autopsy and all type of crazy shit. I don't know how true that is. Leave a comment if y'all niggas know that's facts. You feel what I'm saying? But... And I mean, that nigga was an evil motherfucker. Let me tell you something about Comstock, my nigga. Like, I've been in a lot of jails. I've been in Franklin. I've been in Camp Gabriel. I've been in jails where it's very, very cold, my nigga. Where it's sub-zero temperatures for real. But I'm going to tell you something about the cold in Comstock Yard. I don't know what type of witchcraft them niggas is doing. I don't know what the fuck it is. But in Comstock, that cold is different you heard that shit hit different i don't know if it's the walls and the shit is whipping around in the walls but the cold is different my nigga i felt cold but it was a very rare time that i felt cold that made me cry and pray you understand what i'm saying real talk this is before i had knowledge of self when i was in comstock nigga when i was praying i still bear witness to the higher self and i mean the higher self is deeper than just you the higher self is the entire universe but anyway I'm state down, you heard? I'm state down, state boot, state green, state coat. None of them shits, none of them shits keeping you warm. Them state boots, them shits, you might as well have ice blocks on your feet. So this nigga bugs, yo son, come to the yard. I'll be like, all right, I'm coming out there. Boom, I come out there. The first go back, I mean the first wreck run, shit don't be so bad. A nigga be like, all right, it's cold as fuck out here. You understand what I'm saying? But I could survive a couple of hours or whatever the wreck is. You feel what I'm saying? So by the time that shit be ready for the early go back, nigga be freezing like, nah, I'm going back. I'm going back. It's cold. Like I, my state boots and coat lasted for what it could last for. That two hours, that's about all them shits got in them. You know what I mean? So this nigga used to be like, yo, nigga, fuck you going to go back to your motherfucking cell for? What you going to do in your cell, nigga? You already in jail, nigga. What you want? Be in your cell all night? Nigga, come stay in the fucking yard, nigga. And I'll be like, nah, nigga, it's too cold. He'll be like, nigga, you're going to be good. We're going to spin. We're going to keep it warm. We're going to spin. Know what I mean? So I'll be like, all right, fuck it. I'll let this nigga talk me in the stand. So i stay for the next go back. You feel me? Late wreck. About a half hour into that shit, nigga. I'm like, why the fuck I let this nigga talk me in the stand in this wreck run, nigga? This shit blistering, nigga. My motherfucking feet, I can't even feel my feet. Them state boots, them shits is plastic, nigga. You might as well put two big giant ice blocks on your feet and walk around with them shits if you think even Tim's ain't keeping your feet cold in that up north weather. Not in Comstock Yard. Like I said, I've been in Franklin. I've been in Camp Gabriel's places that's five minutes from Canada, my nigga. But the cold in Comstock Yard is fucking different. Real talk. So, like I said, this nigga talked me into staying out to the late wreck run. I would do it, and then I'd be like, yo, I ain't never fucking with this nigga again. I'd be in my motherfucking, I go back to my cell, nigga. I'd be damn near having hypothermia. You feel what I'm saying? Like, real talk. I'm like, yo, this nigga, I'm like, yo, I'll never fuck with this nigga again. Next day, I see this nigga. Yo, come to the yard. I'm like, yeah, I'm coming to the yard, my nigga. But I'm not staying for... The, the, for both rec runs, I'm telling you that now. Nigga be like, nah, it's all good. Just come to the yard. Go to the yard. Stay for the first rec run. Early go back. I'm like, yo, I'm out, son. Peace. Like, yo, you a sucker, nigga. You a sucker. Like, fuck you talking about you going. Fuck you talking about you out, nigga. Like, I don't understand, niggas. Like, you want to go in your cell, nigga? What's in your cell that you want to rush to get back to your cell for? I'm like, yo, heat, nigga. Life. 
Survival is in that motherfucker, nigga. It ain't out here. Nigga like, yo, come on, man. Stop being a sucker, nigga. Fuck, we sp we talking about New York, nigga. We talking about the town, nigga. We talking about the Ville, nigga. We talking about the town. Let's spin. Let's spin. I'd be like, nah, nigga. It's too cold. I, I ain't built for these state boots, nigga. You got on army coats and chuckers and all type of hats and all of that. I ain't got none of that, nigga. He like, yo, you a sucker, nigga. You a sucker. That's fucked up. Know what I mean? I'd be like, all right, all right, nigga. I'd be like, all right, fuck it. In my head, I'd be like, all right, maybe this shit ain't going to be as cold tonight on the second rec run as that shit was last night. Fuck it. Know what I mean? Let me stop being a sucker, nigga. I'm from New York. Know what I mean? Nigga be forgetting about last night, how a nigga was in his, in his cell bent up. You feel what I'm saying? So I stay out, nigga. I stay out on the second rec run fucking with this nigga. Half hour into the late rec run, I'm like this. Damn, nigga, why I let this nigga talk me into doing this shit again? You feel me? Like, nigga, it's fucking Alaska out here. I'm like, yo, son, real talk, my nigga? I can't stay out here for another hour and a half, two hours. Like, I'm about to ask the motherfucking police, can I go back? Nigga, like, yo, niggas ain't letting you go back, nigga. You missed the early go back. That's I'm ready to go up to them niggas and ask them niggas, yo, listen, please. I'll take a ticket, whatever. Just get me out this yard, nigga. This is not normal temperatures. This is inhumane. Human beings shouldn't have to live in conditions like this. Like, this is ridiculous, my nigga. I don't even know why y'all got this yard open in this type of weather. This nigga Bugs be laughing and shit. He laughing at me. I'm like, this shit ain't funny, nigga. I can't feel my feet, my hands. I might have frostbite. Like, nah, my nigga. These state boots, my nigga, like, these just feel like they frozen to my feet. Like, nah, my nigga, these state boots feel like they stuck to my feet. Like, real chalk, like, like they frozen to my feet. Like, if I was to try to take these shits off, my fucking flesh would come off inside the state boot. Like, nigga used to have to go to his cell and wait two hours to even take off a state boot. Like, I don't even want to, my whole foot might come off, nigga, if I'm trying to take that shit off too aggressively, like... Nigga, shit was inhumane, my nigga. Polar bears wouldn't survive in this yard, nigga. Polar bears would be asking to go back on the early go back in this motherfucking yard, nigga. I'm like, this nigga right here, bro. I'm like, I would never, ever in my life, no matter what this nigga say, I would never, ever stay out here for both rec runs again, nigga. I learned my lesson. Real talk, I was having conversations with God in that yard, nigga. This nigga talking about, yo, just keep spinning, nigga. I'm like, son, I'm having conversations with God, nigga. Like, listen, if you get me out this wreck run, nigga, I will never fuck with this nigga in the yard again, ever. You hear me? Like, this is not for human beings, this type of weather. This is for animals. Mother nigga, when they finally called the go back to go, my nigga, I'll be the first nigga at the door like this. On the go, my shit like this. Excuse me. Please let me get to my fucking cell. Real talk, nigga. This nigga used to be laughing, thinking that shit was funny. Because that nigga was used to that up north cold already. That was my first year up north. That shit was different to me, you heard? Too different. My shit used to be crying, nigga. Dead ass serious. Like, it be so fucking cold, a nigga got to shed tears. Like, it's nothing else to do. Like, you stuck out there. You ain't, you not going back. Know what I mean? Your clothes is fucked up. Know what I mean? Nigga, my shit used to be shedding a tear, nigga, in that yard like this. Yo, I listened to this nigga again. Why did I listen to this nigga again? And you think I learned my lesson from that shit? Nah, nigga. I was out in that yard every fucking night until they got me out of there and sent me to Washington. You heard? So every night I would let I would forget that pain. You know, the next day you slept on that shit, you come out I'm like, yo, nah, that shit wasn't all of that. Be back in that yard that night, having conversations with God. Yo, please, please, bro. I'm not in my I'm not in my right mind state. Listening to this nigga right here. You feel what I'm saying? Please, show a nigga mercy. I used to be walking around the yard with this nigga. Nigga, I'd be praying something happened. Like, nigga, I hope a plane come fall out the sky and land crash land into the yard, and they they gotta call a go back or something. Like anything, nigga, send me a miracle. But yeah, I learned my lesson with that shit, nigga. Don't be fucking with niggas. When you first come up north, don't be letting niggas have you spinning around them yards in them state boots and them state greens, nigga, because your ass will be freezing. You heard? State greens, nothing under them shit, state ass boots. Nah, nigga. 
Nigga, ears was about to fall off like real talk. It's something about the way the wind whips around them walls in that yard, my nigga. It's different, you heard? It's different. I done been in cold places, son, in cold jails. This shit was different. Like, I don't know. Something was going on in there. But, yeah, I ain't staying Comstock for too much longer, my nigga. Like, they eventually shipped me out to Washington. Of course, I was sad to leave niggas and shit like that. But they sent me to Washington. You feel me? And that's that's a medium in the hub of Comstock. And that's a wild-ass adolescent medium, too. And I wouldn't be there for too long. Niggas ran me up out of Washington. You heard? Niggas tried to stab me up on the toilet and all of that. Like, I'm about to tell y'all that story next. You heard? And that's a fact. You know, the kid, him and his man backed out the rug, ran up in the cell and all of that. The Bronx nigga and all of that, right? So check this shit out, right? So I'm in my cell, minding my business, right? I sees this nigga from the Bronx that did that bullshit. I see the nigga come walking past my cell, right? The nigga walks past my cell, the nigga looks, he sees me, and the nigga stops and he comes back. And he like, and he look at my cell, he like, no light, what up nigga? It's like you went over there and fucked up already and came back? So in my first, and my first instinct, I'm like, why is this nigga even talking to me? Like, you feel what I'm saying? You know what you did, nigga. But I ain't no cell gangster. So I ain't gonna start riffing with the nigga through the cell or none of that crazy shit. So, like I said, he like, yo, nigga, you went over there and fucked up already and came back? So I'm like, yeah, nigga, something like that. You heard? So the nigga stands there. He stands by my cell. And he looking down the tier. Right? So I'm like, in my head, I'm like, why is this nigga standing at my gate? Like, we fuck with each other when he know he did that sucker shit. You feel what I'm saying? Nigga talking to me and standing at my gate. Like, we cool now. Like, what's up with this nigga? So something told me, just ask. I was like, what's up with you, though, my nigga? You all right? That nigga looked. That nigga was like, that nigga came up to my cell gate. That nigga was like, it's time breaking me, my nigga. He said, this shit just hit me, nigga. He said, I ain't feel it when I first came through. He said, now I'm feeling this shit, my nigga. He said, I ain't gonna make it, my nigga. I can't do this time. I'm too young to have this much time, my nigga. I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I can't do this time. That nigga told me that, my nigga. Pfft. Or as soon as I heard that shit, the whole thought of revenge over the shit that nigga did, all the pride and ego that I had, thinking about getting back at this nigga for that little bullshit petty shit, all of that shit went out the fucking window, my nigga. When I seen this nigga, who couldn't be no older than 19 years old, maybe 20 years old, Son sitting with 40 fucking years to do, my nigga. And here go me, a nigga that he fucking backed out a ratchet on and ran, had his man run up to my cell. You feel what I'm saying? This nigga breaking down to me, my nigga telling me, yo, I can't do this time, my nigga. This shit hurting me. It's breaking me. I ain't gonna be able to fucking make it. <sighs> yo, bro, I just, I ain't know what to say, my nigga. I was like, yo, bro, you gotta hit that law library and you gotta give some of that fucking time back, my nigga. You can't be, you can't be no 19, 20 year old nigga with 40 joints, my nigga. They gotta show you some type of love, my nigga. You gotta hit that law library and don't give up with them appeals, with them time cuts, everything, my nigga. And that nigga son was just shaking his head. He was like, Yo, you right, my nigga. He was like, yo, you right. Work my mother, you right. He was like, that's what I'm gonna do. Son was like, yo, my nigga, if I don't see you again, stay up and hold your head, my nigga. I was like, yo, you too, my nigga, word up. Son walked away from my cell, my nigga. And I kid you not, I fucking boo-hooed myself to sleep, nigga. I cried like a fucking baby, nigga. 
I'm talking about ready to throw up crying. I'm talking about sick to my stomach, called it an early night, went to bed, fell asleep crying. Thinking about this nigga and how much time he had to do. You feel me? Because he was a young nigga like me, my nigga. And I had to realize that that could have been me. You hear me? I was facing 25 to life, my nigga. I was a lucky motherfucker that I had a private lawyer and family connected to lawyers. I was lucky that I had a witness in my case that testified on my behalf at the grand jury and got my charges dropped from murder to manslaughter. I was lucky because I was young and I was stupid and I didn't realize how much time I was facing. You get 25 to life in New York, you might as well have 40 years because that's how many times they're going to hit you at the board before they let you go with a body. You're going to do another 12 or something like that on top of that 25 at least. So I was young and stupid and I didn't realize how much time I was facing. And if I would have made one wrong mistake, nigga, I would have been in that penitentiary right now to this day. With an L on the back, trying to make a parole boy. You understand what I'm saying? And here go this nigga, 19 years old. Maybe 20 years old. And he gotta do 40 fucking years. And I'm wondering why this nigga is suicidal, pulling out razors and running up in cells. I would be doing 10 times worse than that if I had 40 fucking years to do, nigga. I can't even sit still for five minutes, let alone 40 years. So like I said, nigga, I cried, nigga. I cried like I, like that was my fucking brother, nigga. You heard? I cried like that nigga was a nigga I knew and grew up with all my life. I cried for that nigga, nigga. Cause shouldn't no teenager have to face the next 40, 50 years of his life in the penitentiary for some dumbass mistake he made when he was young, dumb, and full of cum probably had drug addicted parents that wasn't that never loved him and never watched over him and neglected him until he ran into the streets and became a thug and a gangster and caught a body at 16 or 17 years old so the whole system needs to be redesigned those laws for adolescents being charged as an adult at 16 they need to change they need to change because there is no human being on the planet earth that could say at the age of 40 that they're the same person they was at the age of 16. It's impossible. You heard? We all grow and change. So should a kid have to sit in jail for the rest of his life for something that he did when his brain wasn't even developed yet, when he couldn't even understand what consequence really was? Should he have to do life in the penitentiary? Something real wrong with that system, bro. Real wrong with it. A lot of niggas could get back time. And a lot of niggas could, could get reversals and appeals won, but that shit take mental power, determination, strength, and a spirit of, I'll never give up. Y'all need to check this book out called The Master Plan. I can't remember son's name right now. He's from Baltimore and DC. Chris Chris something, I can't remember his name. Leave a comment when you find the book, but it's called The Master Plan. This dude was a 16 year old kid. He had life. He had life without the possibility of parole, without the possibility. And he never gave up. And he hit that law library, he hit the books, and he went crazy. And he gave that time back and came home. Go find that book, it's called The Master Plan. And now he's in these streets doing big things for a fact. I follow son on Instagram. Yo, I'm getting on that phone next. Yo, see yo my nigga, don't disrespect me, my nigga. You see yo, me standing hey, here waiting for the phone, nigga. I don't give a fuck what you waiting for, nigga. Fuck is you talking about? What you talking about, nigga? He's looking at that shit. New York tale. This a true New York tale. For real, for real. The jail to the strip. 200 gangs to list in New York. 
time these niggas is so funny with this shit. I hate this jail, son. First off, the commissary is bullshit. It's nothing but fucking sugar on that shit. Word. Nothing. That. They want you to get diabetes, man, and I ain't fucking with that shit. That's so, word. I do. I get mad candy bars and shit, and I sell them shit for the high. But I don't, I don't fuck around with the streets like that. You know what I mean? So. I just yeah, get bro. like coffee cakes and like pound cakes and shit and I, I eat that shit like that but other than that I'm real talk around. that shit is facts though my nigga like you will get the, the the commissary that be in the city jails you will get diabetes from them shits all they sell is straight nothing healthy on that shit bro the nothing last time healthy, I was bro. on the island I had to survive off of them off of those cup oatmeals and pound cakes bro I Thank ate you. I ate so much of them shits to this day. I won't. I won't even touch that shit. Oatmeal, none of that. I'm good. Real shit. All I eat is big ass corn muffins right now, son. Psst. Big ass corn muffins. I don't even eat like the brownies, none of that shit. Nah, I don't fuck with that. I fuck with corn muffins, and that's about it, son. I don't even. Like I said, anything else I'll be selling. How them niggas? How them niggas menu is on the food tip? Oh my fucking god! What? Shit, horrible. Nasty, nasty filth. But I, a nigga gotta scoff it down, man. Like, if you don't, if you don't eat that shit, you, you ain't gonna survive, son. You, what the fuck you want? Survive with the commissary? That shit. You going? You gonna fuck around and die eating that shit? You keep eating your commissary, son. Word up. That shit is nothing, man. That shit is. This shit is fucked up in here, man. Real. That shit so what whack. I do is, man, I just, I, I off that shit down, son. I ain't gonna be fun. Yeah, now nigga gotta eat that shit just so a nigga don't shrivel up. I was on the island. That's a fact. Nigga, I lost, I lost wild weight. That shit took me like a whole year to get my weight back up when I came home. Like, that shit had you me fucked up. one minute remaining. Word, son. Yeah, my nigga. Crazy. We gotta get you the fuck out of there. They gotta get them visits popping. So that nigga could come there and speak to you in person, like real talk. Wow, wow. Shit is whack, my this nigga. Shit that shit is unconstitutional, my nigga. That shit is unconstitutional, like real talk. Yeah, like. this shit is disgusting, man. Like I, um, I had, like today, I had to fucking clean all the empty cells and, and mop and sweep, sweep the whole chair and everything like that, man. That's yeah, crazy. Bro, you said. Hang up, big bro. I know, man. Shit is whack. You ain't got. You can't call back. Nigga, yeah, you have to call back. Yeah, so if you could call back, call back, cause I still got like 16 cash on this shit. That should be decent. The prices on this shit, 20 at 25 dollars lasts for a minute. I bet. So look, I'm about to call you back. I bet. All right. I took it to Vegas. I, I I took it to Baltimore. I took it to Orlando. I took it to New York. Wherever I go, I take it. Everybody know how I do. Yeah, I'm out, Lance. You heard? Dykeman. Dykeman. Tenth, you heard?